What is this? That doesn't look like a plant to me. Well, guys, sorry to say, but I ran into my first problem here in between episodes. I came to a place that had no plant life. So for the first time in this game, there's no plant life to be seen. So I had to just... Well, I could have used the curtains, I guess. Curtains would have been good. Probably better than the waystone. And this is the test of wit. So remember that spell you picked up of the called Puppet String? Well met, this is a test of wit. The powers of perception and reflection are the keys to solving these puzzles. Show me the wisdom upon which your kind prides itself, child of man. So basically you gotta arrange these guys in a certain pattern. But you have no idea which pattern to arrange them by. You talk to this guy, he'll say, uh, he'll give you a hint. Now you actually have to take the hint to you know, to solve the puzzle, pretty much. So the dragon sees the warrior's sword, while the bird is shown his shield. The beast, meanwhile, looks to his right and sees an empty field. Okay, so, um... Basically... So, how do I even explain this? Do I even need to explain it? The beast looks to his right and sees an empty field, which means the beast goes on the left. And then the dragon sees the warrior's sword, the bird is shown his shield. So the warrior goes in the third spot. The dragon goes on whatever side his sword is on. And the bird goes on whatever side his shield is on. So having said that... Cast the spell here. Get this guy set up the way we need to be. I'm gonna finish moving. Oh wait, no, I didn't want to... Jeez, okay. You don't have to cast the spell once for each, each statue. You can choose different ones. There we go. So we have the beast over there. The bird has shown his shield. And the dragon his sword. And there you go. Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> We thought we'd be starting a video with something like this, though, huh? It's all been pretty much action and side quests up to this point, but now all of a sudden we have these puzzles to do. Oh yeah, this one's pretty fun. I don't need a hint for this one, I know what to do. You know what, though? It's just for, you know, just so you know. When they who lie above are one with they that li he that lies below, the gateway will be opened up and onward you will go. So basically what you're trying to do here is move the blocks. It's kind of hard to explain, but you're trying to move the blocks in such a way that they match up with the 3D image below. But also... Like... Uh, like, see how... Man. See how it kind of matches up that where that block I just moved, it matches up with the image below? Well, that's kind of how it works. You have to move it in a spot where... There, where the lines match up so that it looks like... You know, <laughs> so that, like, the image is consistent. This is probably the hardest one right here, so you have to put it right... There, I believe. I'm not actually 100% sure about that in this one. This one. Looks like it goes over here somewhere. There, just like that. <laughs> yeah, but from a certain angle, you know, it doesn't look right, but, but somehow, like, the, uh, the lines on the sides of the blocks from the camera's angle have to match up. Because, see, now they don't match up because we're looking at it from a different angle, but whatever. And the third and definitely hardest one is here, so I'll go ahead and listen to the hint real quick. It says, The bird is bound to dragon and moon, and on a star he sits. The beast links warrior, moon, and star, yet knows not where he fits. Ah, uh, alright. Yeah, exactly. Let me, let me uh, read that one more time. Ah, now it's kind of hard to tell, but there's actually lines connecting all four of these up here across. 
So, in order for something to connect to the moon and the star, huh, the warrior could go right here. And the beast would connect the warrior, moon, and star by going here. But the dragon, warrior, moon, and star, the beast likes warrior, moon, and star. So, warrior, moon, and star. Okay, here we go, here we go. Beast here, warrior here. Is it just like this? Wait. Okay, that didn't actually... For some reason, that didn't make sense to me. Okay, I, I kind of got it, but I kind of don't like it. It's a little bit above my head. Whatever. Excellent. You have demonstrated your wisdom and passed the test of wits. And now we have proof of wits, because apparently wits themselves are not... You know, whatever. Like, if I go to a party, I don't have to be witty. I just have to pull out my proof of wits, and then everybody's like, Oh, you're so witty! <laughs> so glad the world doesn't actually work like that. I guess some people think that in the world you just get prizes like that. Prove yourself, and then you never have to do anything again once you've proven the first time. Yeah, <laughs> we're not completely stupid, of course not. Tidy. Hey, you had nothing to do with it. Anyway, Oliver, it's time. The final test. What is it, Master Solomon? Huh. <laughs> Everyone knows that. It's a test of strength, stupid. This is a test of your combat ability. You've guessed what you have to do, haven't you? Yep. Aren't you clever, but not just anyone. Hehe. <laughs> You're going to get your heads beaten in. Oh, but I didn't want him smashing the place up, so I prepared a special place for you to fight in. Anyway, you probably need to rest first because you're so small and weak. I'll be waiting here when you're ready. Yeah, well, we don't really need it that bad, but I suppose just for the sake of safety and everything like that, we should save. It is a boss fight after all, and things can go hairy it's in the blink of an eye without you even realizing that it happened. So it's not a bad idea to make sure to be on the safe side. And save. In my special secret place, it's called the Temple of Time. <laughs> door, door, up from the floor. Abracadabra. Oh, my God. Do I even need to say? Do I even have to say it? I don't think so. Amazing, he conjured a door out of thin air. <laughs> In case of emergency, draw a door. Look at Drippy's mouth, oh my god. He's completely... So... <laughs> That's right, we do. Draw a door. I don't know why we keep looking through that stupid book. Then he runs up because he forgets to draw the doorknob. This is so funny, that whole movie. I'm telling you, man. This is the final trial. This looks a bit flippin' serious. This doesn't look like the Temple of Time. <gasps> ah, jeepers. Uh. And just like that, it's daytime. Oliver, look. Oh boy. Well, here we are now. Entertain us. Alright, so we're gonna start this off just like any other one. Um, this guy is not. Wow, wait a second. Nope, didn't get that out in time. See, it doesn't do much good to hit this guy from the front because, as you can see, the damage is minimal. Um. Esker seems to be hitting pretty good, though. Or is that me doing that? Alright, get it. I'm not sure why I just did that. I thought I was gonna have to move back to the attack command, and I didn't. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, crap. Jeez, I didn't realize he was doing it until it was too late. 
Alright, get back to Oliver here for a second. We need to get healing touch on her right away. Wow, let's uh, do that again, shall we? Actually, no, let's defend. See, this is the problem with the AI. The AI doesn't know how to defend. So it never does it, you know. So you're going to be, like, constantly trying to keep her alive. And I kind of wonder if it's even worth it, really, to be honest. <laughs> if only for the sake of just, you know, being nice. I mean, <laughs> there's little other reason to do it. Let's go ahead and pick up the magic limb. So he's pretty much always going to be attacking her. I'm going to come out here and hit him from behind. Oh, that's not much better, is it? Whoops. Man, thanks for the warning. Gee, this barely had a chance to pull my command back. Oi, Ellie boy, this beastie right here's got a big old shield protecting his back. Better give him a whacking from the front, I reckon. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It's kind of not working out right. Yep. Let's go back to Oliver again so we can continue the healing crap. If you want to, you could alternate between healing her and casting your own spells, which is another thing you could do. The only problem with that is you're going to run out of MP real fast. Why don't you get over here and attack me, dude? There we go. Okay. Um, let's give this, uh, give this pulse spell a try here. Uh, oh, that could have been better. Oh, shoot. Man, he just doesn't give you much warning on that one, I tell you. Yeah, now I'm starting. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Let's go ahead and fix my ass up here. What else you can do if you want? Eat white bread. Takes a little less time. Plus, also, you don't have to wait for your spells to recharge. Yeah, we'll put one more healing touch on Esther there. She's hanging in there. As long as she's got Peak Hole doing his thing. Let's give her another one. Is that really seriously it? Holy crap, I, I thought we were just getting started there. I didn't realize I was even doing any damage to him at all. I guess Esther pretty much took care of that for me. <laughs> Well, thanks. <laughs> 435 experience, yeah. Take that action, man. Spirit of the Temple. Not to be confused with the Spirit Temple. <laughs> so not funny. Esther learned Quick March, yeah. Splish Splash, I was taking a bath. All about a Saturday night. A rub dub got eruption in the tub. Thinking everything was all right. Ha! Huh, you passed the test of strength. Now we got the proof of strength. Hey, who needs to go to the gym? I got proof of strength right here, man. I'm Ranch Wilder. We sure did. That's the last trial. You've passed it all. Oh, I got you a graduation present here. Bridge spell. Ooh, this is a good one. This unlocks a few things early on. Back on the first continent, there's some more hidden treasures we can go get now. Now that we have the bridge spell. Question is, am I going to do that now or later? I don't know. So you don't want to keep going back to the first continent every time the slightest little thing opens up. But at the same time, what if there's something really good over there? I don't know. Alright, and here finally, we're going to get the ability to capture our own familiars. Just as a fair warning, the rest of this video is pretty much going to be just tutorial stuff it's on evolving familiars and catching them. So if you're not interested in that, by all means, feel free to click off. I wouldn't blame you at all if you did. No, you, th you know you feel like you're playing a game, stupid! An instrument? Let me up. Leave it to me, Oliver. Better give you it. I better give you it before we carry on. <laughs> Better give you it. That's a very awkward choice of words there, but... Master. Master Shredder. Here, take this. It's called the Heart's Winning Heart. Wow. 
That's cool. Beautiful. Dribby's so happy. You obtained the heart winning harp. It's not just beautiful, it's useful too. You can play to tame creatures and make them your familiars. It's probably easier to show you than explain. You're quite slow after all. <laughs> oh crap. I'm gonna make a choice here. So this, I guess you could say, is kind of like choosing your starter, except we already have a bunch. Prepare three creatures for you to tame. Pick one you like the look of. You can tame creatures during battle. Try it out with these ones. Don't look so scared. They're my pets. They won't attack you. <laughs> but how do I tame them? Well, every now and again, when you beat a creature, it will be so impressed, it will fall in love with you. <laughs> Say what? When that happens, yucky hearts will appear above its head like this. Yeah, that's very cute. Just in time for Valentine's Day. Which was yesterday when I'm recording this. So when you see the hearts above them, you play the serenade, and boom! The creature joins you. Just like that. It doesn't matter who beats the creature, it can still go all gooey and girly and lovey-dovey. But only you can tame it, Esther. So if we want a creature to join us, Esther has to play the song. I just said that, didn't I? Stop asking stupid questions and give it a try. Yes, Your Honor, but which one shall we pick? Why do we have to flipping pick? Can't he give us a whole lot of them, the stingy old so-and-so? What's the matter, spoiled for choice? Well, when you finish moaning and groaning, just let me know which one you want me to give you completely for free. Alright, um... There's three choices here. Boo! <laughs> This one's called a boggly boo. It may have a stupid name, but it can scare the pants off people even worse than me. Packs after punch. Those are some pretty nasty tricks, too. Hmm, really? Pee wee, this cute creature's called a naiad, so there. It's not very good at normal attacks, but it's got some decent magical ones and a great healer, so it's helpful to have around. Wait a minute, you just said that this one was better than the other two. Okay, what about this guy? Ba doo doo ba ba, pa parp. That stupid-looking one's called a Shonky Honker. It's got good defense and magical attack, and it can put enemies to sleep as well. It's a bit of an all-rounder, I suppose. Well, what you don't know... Okay, see, I know something that you don't about this guy. Well, you yeah, know, okay, apparently I can't choose here. To talk to him, I guess. Have you decided which one you want to be your new familiar yet? Yep. Ready? You might as well do it the same way as you would do when to tame a creature in a normal battle. In case you've forgotten, that means you have to beat the creature up, and then get Esther to play it a serenade on her harp. And don't wet your pants, I've told them not to attack you so you wimps don't get scared and run away. <laughs> now, to the battlefield! Alright, we're gonna have to make this quick. We're under attack! Right then, daughter of a shot, are you ready? You're the only one who can use that harp. You better try it out, hadn't you? Yeah, that's right. Right, listen, there's three creatures here. You have to pick one to be your new familiar. You know how to tame a creature, don't you? First, you have to beat it. These ones are friends of mine, so I told them not to fight back when you bash them. Well, come on, beat up the creature that you want to be your new best friend. Alright, well, uh... Do I just have to do this with Esther? Attack? I don't want to do it that way. It's not going to let me change to, uh... It's not letting me change to a familiar, I'm pressing it. Well, geez. There's something you don't see every day. And there it is. As you hit them enough times, the hearts appear above their head. Look at that, it's up on its feet again. Creatures do that sometimes when you beat them in battle. See those yucky pink hearts over its head? They mean you can tame it. If Esther's near a creature with hearts over its head, she can use her heart command. Then she can choose whether to play a serenade to tame it, or let it go back into the wild. But if you don't choose quickly, it'll run off anyway. <laughs> Told these ones not to run away, because you're beginners and you're probably rubbish. So, do the hard command. And then press serenade. And you've tamed the Shonky Honker. Little known fact, actually, it's probably not very little known. But the Shonky Honker actually... At level 99, it's, now I don't know if this is still true because you know this is like 
the last time I read about this game was like a month or two after it came out, so people may have found out differently by now. But the last I've heard, the Shonky Honker actually has the highest magic attack in the game at level 99. That's not to say it's always going to be that way, but, uh... Man, what do I call this guy? Diarrhea 4. Yep. Since you don't trust me, you don't want to know what Diarrhea 4 is. I already said that in Cloudberry Kingdom, but whatever. Now I'm saying it again. Not bad for a first try, I suppose. Like I said, anyone could be a creature, but Esther has to play the song to tame it. Hmm. Yes, Master Solomon, we understand. Yes, Master Splinter! Neato, huh, Esther? You can have three more familiars as well as the ones you use in battle. Tidy, but what happens if we get all overexcited and tame more familiars than we got room for? That's a good question. And what are the what is the answer to that? Not find out next time because there's no plants in here. So now this finally makes sense. What a funny looking little thing is he familiar too? Don't be stupid. That's the rep the rep from the familiar retreat. Don't take any familiars you don't need off your hands and keep them safe back at the retreat. There it is again. That thing. That thing that I saw in the top left corner of the screen earlier. There's another one right there in the picture. Oh, that is useful. Looks like you'll be keeping busy then, hey, Esther. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see what kinds of creatures there are out there to tame. You can find familiar retreat holes in every town you visit, and even in some dangerous places. Pretty much anywhere that there's a waystone, there's also a familiar retreat hole. So just like Pokemon, you send them off to the... You know, you leave them in the center or whatever. Here, you just send your familiars, the ones you're not using, off to the familiar retreat. T explaining this is going to give me face aid, you're telling me. So, Solomon's still got stuff to tell you, Mon. Where are your manners? Oh, I don't know. They must have been in the toilet or something. Right, it's time to teach you about metamorphosis. This is boring, so listen carefully. I'm not explaining it again. If you look, you can see your familiar wants to metamorphose. And for that one, you'll need one of these. Here. Sun drop, really? Is this some kind of treat? That's not just any old treat, Mon. Just look at try it, will you? I'm bored of talking. Go to that mite you've got there. Oh, really? Right now? Is it gonna let me do... Oh, yeah, I guess I can metamorphosis him. I don't know what happens if you're not... Usually you can't metamorphosis... Yeah, usually you can't metamorphose at this level. Like, usually it's level 20 or 30 when you're allowed to, but hey, you know what? If it wants me to do this now, then I'm fine. So, here we go. Now, sometimes there'll be two different choices on what you want to turn into. And the stats can differ depending on which one you choose. So... Quark Metamorphosed into a Mighty Might! <laughs> Number of different tricks Quark can perform in battle increased by one. Nice. So that means he'll have more options in battle. Neato, look at my familiar. That's metamorphosis. Well, there you go. That didn't take nearly as long. Then again, we're not done yet. <laughs> I also get to gobble up more gems, meaning you can teach them even more tricks. The treat you need to feed a familiar to make it metamorphosis depends on its sign, something you never would have worked out on your own. <laughs> Here's another piece of, piece of priceless wisdom you don't deserve. When familiars metamorphose, they go back to level 1. Yes, they do. But that doesn't mean you're back to square 1. Once you train them up, they'll be much more powerful than they were before. Whether you metamorphose your familiars or not is up to you. Some idiots prefer to stick with what they got. Do what you want, I don't care. Now, you don't need anything else explained, do you? You're fine with what I told you, right? Yes, Master Splinter. Good. I hate explaining all that stuff. Anyway, if you want to hear all the boring details again, you can just ask that boring old telling stone you got there. Did somebody say my name? Yes, Toilatella. It is as his supremacy says. I can replicate his explanations in minute detail at any time you choose. You need only ask, and BORING! Oh, you haven't changed. Anyway, now you know how it all works. You can get out there and tame loads of familiars and make a metamorphosis. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Ta, your supremitude! Right, where to next, then? Oh, man, do you have any idea? Can we go back to Alma Moon quickly? I want to see how my father is getting on. 
Great, sounds great. Shut up and get lost. So finally, now that all that explain uh, that all that explanation is done, I can finally get out of here and find me some plants or something, so that I can, you know, do what I got to do to save my game here. I do what I do to switch over episodes. There's not going to be anything out here, though, is there? You know what? I'll see you back at Alma Moon. Oh, well, you know what, though? This is kind of a dangerous walk now, because, see... Now that my might is metamorphosed, he's back to level 1. And his stats have taken a total nosedive. So, I'm going to have to be really careful... You know, what I do in battle. Because I'm probably just going to have to not use him at all. What's that rumbling noise, Ollie Boy? Ain't your stomach, is it? <laughs> oh my goodness, look over there! Uh, whoa? Nikos, that ain't good! Oh no, old Smokey's erupting! Great. Nearby volcanoes erupting. I'm no scientist, but I reckon it's the reason this whole region is so nice and warm. But it shouldn't be erupting. There's a massive great big boulder blocking the crater to stop that from happening. Jeepers, do you think it's come loose somehow? After all these hundreds of years, not without some serious encouragement it hasn't. There's nothing in the old stories about it ever having been dislodged before. And it's an unprecedented disaster we've got on our hands, is it? Crikey, now the moon could be in danger. We have to go to Old Smoky. What? No, let's go to the town first. Ah. Uh, or we could just ignore all that and do other side quests. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> you little beauties, it's enough to make a grown fairy cry, seeing how far you've come. Alright, I'm game. Let's save the day. Onward to Old Smokey. Well, that sounds about right. Holy crap. So, um... We're gonna try to avoid the fights until we get back to town. So at least we know that, you know, a source of healing is nearby. Stay away, stay away, stay away. He's really gonna chase me down here, isn't he? Oh, that's drippy. I'm getting confused again. Here it is, we're back in town. Oh, wait, is that a... Is that one of those guys, those skeletons? Because we still gotta beat that tenth skeleton, don't we? Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and show the Mighty Might in action here. Since we were lucky enough not to hit any battles. I mean, to tell you the truth, he's not gonna be as good. But, he'll still be okay. I mean, just... Yeah, see how much damage I took from that? Holy crap. It's a lucky thing we got... You know, Patrick in there to keep things fairly fresh here. <laughs> or at least to keep the damage coming, anyway. But now, as you can see, since he's back to level 1, she, like, instantly grew to level 3 in just that short amount of time. So now he's going to start gaining stats all over again. Which is great. Now, this guy right here, I mean, look at this. He gained 2 levels there. And look how much his magic attack went up by 14. Oh, look at all the other stats as far as that goes. You get 18 evasion. That's a little bit ridiculous, I must say. <laughs> 18 evasion off of two levels. That's nine per level. Usually when monsters get that much of a stat increase, it's harder to level them up. Because there are some monsters that are like that. You can go out there and tame them. They'll join your party at level one. And then much to your surprise... It'll take, like, a thousand experience just to get him up one level. And then it'll take, like, two thousand experience to get him to level three. There are familiars in the game that are like that. It's not the same XP scale for every one. So at any rate, this has been a really long episode. And so, I can't think of a better time or reason to go to sleep. Alright, thank God, okay. See you guys next time!